My name is Mark Vince. For the last seven years, I've been traveling the world telling adventure stories on Brave Wilderness. Together, we've summited mountains, explored the depths of the ocean, and come face to face with the planet's most dangerous wildlife. I'm taking you with me into the heart of Africa, to a place many wouldn't dare go. This is the Congo Diaries. Here we go. The road to the Congo officially has begun. Like most Brave Wilderness adventures, this journey begins with a trip to the airport. And my first destination isn't actually in Africa at all. I'm headed to Rome for four days to acclimate. I'm the only Brave Wilderness team member headed to the Congo. I've got an amazing team that I'm going to be meeting up with in Africa, and I can't wait for you to meet them all. I'm not gonna lie to you, this is the most ambitious expedition I will probably ever go on, certainly that I've ever been on before. It is a rare opportunity to be able to go to a place like the DRC and film within Virunga National Park. I got a tight connection. We got nine minutes to make our flight. All right, somehow I gotta make it to B24 in eight minutes. Like I said, 24 isn't that far away. Five minutes. No. Okay, miss it. All right, missed the connection. We've got a new flight two hours from now. What are you gonna do? We're getting on another flight. Life goes on. Here we go. Long flight, lots of reading, lots of in flight entertainment. See you in Rome. All right. In Rome. Made it. Checking in finally. It's been a long journey. So, here we are. We have made it to Rome. Uh, I feel like a new person after a shower and some fresh clothes. It's amazing. The goal today is simple. Do not succumb to jet lag. I do not want to take naps. In my opinion, the best way to do that is to stay in motion. If you're ready, I'm gonna fire up the GoPro and hit the streets of Rome. Let's go. First stop, the Coliseum. Check this out. Being in here is unbelievable. Once you get inside, you can truly appreciate just how huge it was, especially for being thousands of years old. I mean, the fact that they could pack in 65,000 people in here. We have a lot of things to see today, so time to head on to the next place. Vespa, Vespa, lots of Vespas. I feel like I'm missing out by not having a Vespa. Total FOMO right now. Now that's a fountain. Cool, Salt Trevi Fountain. There it is, it's the Pantheon. Built over 2,000 years ago, it's still the world's largest unreinforced dome. Really cool, I'm really glad I stopped off at this one. All right, made it to Vatican City. This view is unreal. I'm trying to get to the Vatican Museum to see the Sistine Chapel. That's where we want to head. It's gonna be a lot to see along the way though. Wow. There you have it, Sistine Chapel. I would say that is an absolute full day in the city of Rome. I hope you enjoyed this tour. Tomorrow, we head to Africa. The adventure continues tomorrow. Made it through security, got our tickets. Now we gotta get on our flight. Over and out, see you in Ethiopia. All right, so I got some new guests for the vlog. Meet Eric. Eric Lehman, showrunner, VP. We got we got Taylor over here from Chicago. What's up? I'm a sound engineer for this project. The team is assembled. We're just waiting on our flight to Goma. Almost there. <laughs> this is happening. All right, we are driving through Goma right now. We just got through the airport, through customs. Uh, it was a pretty crazy scene in there. It took us quite a while to get through. This is a very interesting drive at night. There's a lot of fires on the side of the road. We are in Goma and we are in the thick of it. Say hi, Tony. That's like Tony, our DP. All right, I think we're at our hotel. Yeah, this is Lake Kivu Lodge. 
Okay, so just met up with the crew, had a debrief for tomorrow, We've got a good game plan. The ride over to the hotel, as short as it was, I mean, gosh, that was like being in Mad Max. I mean, there were like fires on the streets, just rubble everywhere. Like, it's, it's definitely a, a place that uh, you would not want to go out walking in, at night. With that being said, I need to get some shut-eye because we're gonna wake up bright and early and uh, hit the road uh, on our way to the gorilla sector of Barunga National Park. It will not be a journey for the faint of heart. This is uh, probably the most dangerous part of this entire trip, believe it or not. The one thing I will say, this section of the road that we're going on, is, is a dangerous road. It's that simple, okay? People have been killed in it recently. People get kidnapped on it. And it's like, it's the real deal, okay? If for any reason, we get stopped, there's vehicles stopped or stuck somewhere, and there's a lot of stuff going down, we cannot get away with vehicles, then get out, okay? And get yourself into some sort of cover, depending on where we are, okay? And then, at that point, you'll just need to take direction from me on the ground, or from the local rangers on the ground. Got our convoy here. My favorite. The Defender, this is the one that we're gonna be driving up to Virunga. I thought you were calling me the Defender. I got all excited I had a new nickname, but I guess Well, you I... could be the Defender if you want. <laughs> I would love it. The camera defense. Still a cameraman at heart. You could take... You could put the cameraman in front of the camera, but you can't take the cameraman out of the guy. No, we're gonna scrap that lineup. Got a camera too. Everyone's got a camera. I've got cameras, you've got cameras, he's got cameras. Cameras everywhere. The cameras cameras all everywhere. You want cameras, we got cameras. Come on down to the Congo Camera Emporium. No, don't, don't, but. <laughs> this is Jume, our driver. Jume, the man at the wheel. This is the stretch of road to be concerned about. This is a dangerous road. In fact, we have an armed convoy of Barunga Rangers. They're gonna lead the way, and we're gonna follow them. Here we go. All right, so we got a flat tire here. We're trying to fix. We're in the lava field, so might have punctured on like a lava cinder. This is Mount Niragongo. This erupted in May of this year, so just months ago. And you can see the lava flow came down off the mountain and then through this entire area. But what's really critical to what happened with the infrastructure in Goma, you see those, there's power lines running right across this field and the lava flow took it out, disrupting power. Really, really sad event that occurred in a place that didn't need another blow. All right, so right now we stopped here in this small village to uh, transfer our gear to this Unimog. Huge truck. It's gonna take it to the top of the hill to Kaboomba. But while we're here, we met some of the local villagers and uh, a lot of them are children. They love cameras. They love to be on cameras. I'm gonna like go over here and see if they wanna do a selfie. Let's see. So here we are at the park gate. Before we even think about going on a gorilla trek, we've got to get to base camp. So we've got a little bit of a hike ahead of us. Got to trek to the trail. Yep. No, there's no ski lifts at Kaboomba, guys. Sorry to say. We made it. Is that for us? Oh, wow. thank you. Cheers to Kaboomba. At first light, we'll head up the mountain and we're gonna finally get to see those gorillas. I could not be more excited and I cannot wait to bring you with me on that experience. Look at that. It's a really special day. Um, it's been a long journey to get here. It's like starting to hit me now. We're all hiking down from base camp to the start of the trailhead. Today, we are going to film our cinematic opening scene <clears throat> for the project. Mm, still waking up. Cinematic Open is a, uh, a scheduled out narrative that we're going to try to tell through imagery and sounds more like the opening to Spielberg film, like Think Indiana Jones. There's a big debate broiling in the production world. What's more important, picture or sound? Picture or sound, Taylor? Uh, how popular are podcasts right now? 
They're having their moment, aren't they? I think we're gonna go with sound. Taylor. Yes, sir. Has anybody ever asked you, hey, podcast and chill? No. No. I don't doubt All right, so we're going, we're going picture, sound. Rob, yes, man. from security's perspective, what's more important, picture or sound? Picture or sound? Oh, that's a tough one. From a security perspective? Yeah. Well, I would say both are important. Okay. In my, in my world. Right? Yeah, that's a non-answer. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. Picture or sound? Go. Oh, I don't want to answer that. It's a combination of both because, you know... Have you been talking to Rob? Because he gave us a non-answer also. Are you, are you playing the fence? It's sound. It's sound. sound. I believe sound is more important than picture. All right, that's from, that's from the chief over here. Let's ask the DP. Hey, Tony, picture or sound, more important. As a DP, this is going to be really controversial. Sound, 100%. Wow. Without sound, we got nothing. Sound is uh, is winning the, uh, the straw poll right now. Anyway, we're going to get started with today. We'll catch up with you on the trail. If you watched the actual episode, you'll know that gorillas are nomadic and they nest in a different place every single day. Entering the jungles of Virunga National Park was like stepping into another world entirely. Completely different from our journey to our base camp, for the first time, I felt like I was in the presence of Africa's most notorious primates. But the risk of danger remained ever present. They are wild animals. The silverback can believe that you want to catch a baby or to catch a female. If the gorilla charge, it is. Don't try to run. Take a sitting position. Look down. When I approach them, I do <coughs> to tell them that don't be worried and to try to quiet them. <coughs> yeah. Everybody, I want to take a moment to introduce you. This is Papa Augustine. This is this is our uh, gorilla trekker. Papa's been trekking gorillas for over 25 years here in Virunga. He does this under the pressure of dangerous rebels and other bad actors that have taken advantage of Virunga National Park. But you do it because you love the gorillas. Uh, so because we were, I love gorillas, I have to say, okay, if I die, I die. And uh, if the, the gorillas are safe, okay, uh -huh. no problem. And it's worth risking your life to protect the gorillas. Exactly, exactly. Well, thank you for all the hard work. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. All right. Well, we just had a, a lunch down here. We did our cinematic cold open this morning. That's all finished now. Feeling really good about those shots. Now we've got to head up that trail. Uh, it's about an hour and a half hike to where the gorillas are today. A lot of butterflies around here. I don't know if you can see them flying behind me. Makes me look pretty. Sure does. <laughs> Before long, we found our first piece of evidence we were on the right trail. That's a big steaming pile of... Dung. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Check this out. You see this matted down underbrush? That is a clear indication that mountain gorillas have moved through here and down that trail. So from here on forward, we could see mountain gorillas at any point. We're gonna keep our voices low, our movements deliberate, because if the gorillas get spooked, they will move up the mountain and it's game over for the rest of the day. We have, uh, we have located the mountain gorilla tracks. Be very careful in here. They just cut these very sharp. Don't need an impalement today. The underbrush of this forest, it's almost impossible to navigate. See the trackers up there are trying to cut a path for us. The gorillas can move a whole lot faster through this than we can. We only have so much time before we have to call it. So fingers crossed that we actually Get to see a gorilla. Okay, we just heard a gorilla right around this bend here. This is it, this is the moment we have traveled so incredibly far for, not only to the Congo and up this mountainside, 
and seven years of adventures have led me to this. <laughs> my heart is beating out of my chest. <laughs> Are we safe? Oh my gosh. Okay, that was insane. The two Silverbacks and his family were fighting for dominance. And you can see where there's actually battle damage. The subdominant Silverback is bleeding from the face. That was definitely not what I expected for our first gorilla encounter. Despite the fact I've been told gorillas can be aggressively territorial. It's a baby gorilla. And will viciously protect their families if provoked. Look at the size of the bite on his neck. The only thing that's going to give a silverback that big, a gash like that, is a fight with the dominant male. And staring at that wound, I have to ask myself, do I really want to meet the animal that did that? Despite my fear ringing the alarm bell to turn back, we press on and find ourselves in the middle of something I've never seen documented. Bit of a gorilla feeding frenzy. They found a banana tree and they're literally ripping off the inside of the plant and eating it from beneath. Making it this far into the family unit has me wondering, is the dominant silverback still in the distance or could he be watching us from just behind the brush? He's bugging, Mark. This is the, the, yeah. the dominant male. The dominant male here in the family. And he's okay with us being here? Yeah, he's okay. He's the father of the largest family of gorillas here in Barunga National Park. 44 gorillas in his family. This is the biggest gorilla in the Congo. Must weigh over 400 pounds. He's a handsome silverback and he knows it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at those teeth. Did you see those teeth? Witnessing gorillas for the first time was life changing. We were finally seeing what we had traveled so far to film. And I was over the moon with excitement. In all of my wildlife encounters, nothing has ever compared to the gravity of this adventure. And this moment brought all of those feelings to a focal point. The baby gorillas made me particularly emotional because I could see so much of us in them. Their curiosity was clear and mannerisms were more than familiar. It was truly like watching a small child play with their brothers and sisters. It is unbelievable how lucky we were to film some of the footage that we got today. Honestly, this is some of the rarest footage we could have hoped for in the DRC. Not only do we get to film a banana tree feast something that I've never seen documented before, but we also got to meet Bagheni, the largest silverback gorilla in all of the Congo. Man, what a day. So we're walking back down the mountain. We had to hike really far, went about five miles to see uh, the mountain girls today. It was incredible. And we're just now cutting through a little village on our way back to our base camp. Look at that. That's dinner tonight for some of the locals. And uh, as you can see here, this is a pretty traditional home. It's a, it's a mud walled house. Bonjour, bonjour, hi, hi. And the, the locals are so friendly. I gotta say, um, we've been cutting through these uh, agricultural areas on our way back to base camp and they've been nothing but nice and joyous to see us, uh, especially the children. Uh, a couple of them have been practicing their English. Uh, you could tell that they only know a few words, but I've had a couple, hi, how are you? And when I reply to them in English, it really makes their days. Bonjour. 
With our mountain gorilla footage in hand, all that was left to do was head back to camp and pack up our gear, and then make one last drive down the RN2 to begin the long journey home. Here we are, dusty <laughs> and headed home. We just wrapped on production and we're now headed to uh, Kibu Lodge to break down the gear, pack up our cases and start our long adventure home. This trip has been absolutely incredible. It's been an experience that I will never forget and truly a once in a lifetime opportunity to tell the story of a place and a people that are remarkable beyond words. This one means a lot. Thank you all for watching. Uh, now the long journey home begins. I hope you enjoyed this exclusive behind the scenes footage from our first brave mission in the Congo. And if you haven't, watch the entire episode now, streaming only on the Brave Wilderness YouTube channel. Link in the description below.